بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله back after some time away reach starting with Allah's permission the very important topic of manners in Islam because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said inna ma ba'thu li utamma makarim al-akhlaq that verily the purpose of my mission was to perfect good character and also the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the heaviest thing on the scale on the day of judgment will be good character so good character of course first and foremost with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then secondly with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so learning about character in Islam and how to treat one another is something extremely important and today's topic in this journey of learning about character is of the utmost importance because it's speaking about the manners and behavior that we should have towards our parents and in order to know that in order to rectify ourselves with regards to our parents and how we behave with them we need to first understand what is the lofty status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to our parents because once we come to understand what it means to have parents in Islam then that can be the point from which we move forward to give them their manners and their rights respectively so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-isra he says wa qada rabbuka alla ta'budu illa iyyah wa bil walidayn ihsana Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and instructed as an obligation that none should be worshiped except him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone tawhid of Allah azza wa jalla has to be established all of your love all of your exalting all of your magnifications any type of worship that you can think of should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in the same breath in the same verse and he said and it's commanded that you be dutiful to your parents what is the connection here between mentioning tawhid which we know is the greatest obligation in existence and then mentioning also that be dutiful to your parents what is the connection here so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us we have to establish tawhid right that is the purpose of our existence wama khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa liya'budun i did not create man or jinn except that they worship me alone right and in the same verse allah mentions parents why because who brought you into existence allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's right upon us that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We thank Allah azza wa jalla alone for all the never ending bounties that he's given us. But then who was the vessel for bring us bringing us into existence? It was our parents by the permission of Allah. So the command is from Allah to come into existence. But through what do we come into existence? From our parents. So is there a type of irtibat? There's a type of connection there in the rights. And of course Allah azza wa jalla's rights are first and foremost but also the parents rights are extremely important because Allah azza wa jalla has mentioned it in that same verse and we'll come back to this verse in a few moments inshallah to further look at it in detail the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in the hadith in sahih muslim and this hadith i want you to really ponder upon it if you can write it write it if you can memorize it memorize it make it your mission statement when you go home write it somewhere in your house so that you can reflect upon it from time to time you can internalize it and think about it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in sahih muslim aqwala rajul ila nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam a man came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yaqul ya rasulullah ubayyuka ala al hijrati wal jihad he said oh prophet of allah i have come to give you my pledge of allegiance that i will make with you hijra migration and i will make you with you jihad aba taghi al ajr min allah I'm seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What reward is he looking for? Tell me. Jannah, right? The one who goes out in jihad with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and dies and becomes shaheed, he's going direct to Jannah. So you can see how huge this reward is in the mind of this believer. He's willing to sacrifice everything. He said, "I come to make hijra with you, Rasulullah. I've come to sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I've come to make jihad with you, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." abtaghi al ajr min allah i want the reward from allah azza wa jal i want to directly enter into jannah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do you have one of your parents alive 
He said, do you have one of your parents alive? So here's this man, so excited, rightly so. He wants to be with the Prophet ﷺ. He wants to get that reward, what those noble warriors are going to get. Yet the Prophet ﷺ turns his attention to another direction. He says, do you have any parents that are alive? He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, bal kilahuma. He said, rather, both of my parents are alive. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, looking him in the eye, atabtari al ajr min Allah. Do you want reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The man said, Naam, yes, O Rasulullah. He said, Farja ila walidayka fa ahsin suhbatuhuma. Go back to your parents and be amazing in how you treat them. Be the best companion to them. So, as many of the scholars they mention, like Ibn Hajj al Askalani and others, that every moment that you spend in trying to please your parents, every moment that you spend in trying to provide them comfort, Every moment that you spend in engaging in good conversation with them, in taking care of them, you are in a type of jihad, as the hadith clearly said. Now, any one of us who is truly seeking Jannah, then we should never sell, sell ourselves short with regards to this opportunity, if we have this opportunity. If our parents are alive, one or both of them, the gates to Jannah are there for us, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in numerous hadith. So every time we are striving to serve our parents, we should imagine, I'm doing a type of jihad with the Prophet ﷺ because that's what this man came to do. Hijra and jihad and the Prophet turned him to something else because his parents were alive. So we should understand this hadith and we should reflect upon it often. One of the ways that a person can check his relationship between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through having good manners with your parents. You know, many a time we say to ourselves that we are on a journey to Allah which is true. We say to ourselves that we are striving to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is true. We say to ourselves that we want to be better believers which is true. This is one of those ways where you can have the litmus test. You can check. The Prophet sallallahu said in Tirmidhi, رِضَ اللَّهِ فِي رِضَ الْوَالِدِ وَسَخْتَ اللَّهِ فِي سَخْتِ الْوَالِدِ That the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the pleasure of their parents. And the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the displeasure of the parents. So look to yourselves and look to how you behave with your parents. Every time they are pleased through your behavior, your mannerisms, your effort that you spend with them, trying to please them and provide for them, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. And the converse is also true. If they are angry with you and upset with you, you know, and the amazing thing about parents, they don't tell you that they're upset with you. But you can figure it out if you have intelligence. Everyone knows. Your parents are so kind to you and so big-hearted that they put up with all the nonsense that you put in front of them and do towards them. They won't tell you that they're upset with you so often. But you're able to tell. And that's a way of checking your relationship with Allah Azawajal, checking the state of your iman. So know that if you truly want to please Allah, it's not about just coming to the masjid, which is something extremely important. But if you are one who comes to the masjid and prays in the front row, yet you go home and displease your parents, there is something seriously wrong with your understanding of Iman and understanding of Islam. So yes, alhamdulillah, we do a variety of good deeds and we should continue to do those. But if those are not leading us to please our parents, then there's something wrong with our faith. There's something wrong with our Islam. Our Islam. Go back to the verse. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّا Allah commanded that you worship Him alone. Establish Tawheed. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا So the more you have of Tawheed, the more you have correctness in your Iman, the more you have of worship to Allah Azawajal, what it will reflect on? It will reflect on your obedience to your parents and your goodness to your parents. And if that's not there, like I'm establishing, then there's something wrong with your relationship with Allah Azawajal. You are not truly understanding the rights of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the rights of His creation. Somebody may strangely think to himself, well, you know what, I'm doing a variety of good deeds and I don't really need to be so good to my parents. Well, first and foremost, as we established, this is not a true reflection because if your parents are upset, then Allah Azza wa Jal is upset with you. But worse than that, more da as dangerous as that, is that the Prophet ﷺ has made dua against you. The Prophet ﷺ has made dua against you. The Prophet ﷺ said, رَغْمُ أَنفُهُ رَغْمُ أَنفُهُ رَغْمُ أَنفُهُ May his nose be humiliated in the dirt. He said this three times. 
The companions, when they heard this from the merciful one, they were shocked. Who is the Prophet ﷺ making dua against? That may he be humiliated, his nose be rubbed in the dust. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man adraka walidayhi ahaduhuma aw kilahuma inda al-kibr, thumma lam yadkhul al-jannah. Whoever has one of his parents alive when he is old, or both of them, and then doesn't get to enter into Jannah. Meaning this person truly deserves humiliation, that the gates of Jannah were there for him to enter through, either one of them or both of them, gates of Jannah. Yet he didn't manage to get into Jannah through serving his parents and being dutiful to them, then truly this person deserves to be ruined and to be humiliated. So the person needs to think all of the time. We need to always reflect. Are we from those whom are falling into the, the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu which is serious, which means humiliation in this life and the hereafter? Or are from those who are trying their best to serve their parents and have a good relationship with their parents? So as we've understood, the parents, they have a lofty status. And through this lofty status, the believer will always try to please his parents. That smile on his mother's face, on the father's face, is more valuable to the believer than everything else. And the believer never wants to be that horrible person, that evil beast of a person that causes a tear to drop from his mother's face or a tear to drop from his father's eyes. That is the worst type of creation. Here in Abu Dawood, a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I've come to make jihad with you. I've come to make hijrah with you. Again, another person giving the pledge of allegiance. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I've left my parents for your sake. And they were crying. The Prophet ﷺ said, Irja, irja ilayhima wa kama abkaytahuma. Go back to them and make them laugh and smile like you made them cry and sad. So in this instance where the task was so noble, the objective was so noble, yet he left his parents crying. The Prophet ﷺ said, go back and make them laugh instead of what you did making them cry. So then how beyond that situation, beyond that noble objective, can anybody make their parents cry and sad? How low a person would be to do that? How evil a person would be to want to do that? Be proud of serving your parents. Wherever you are and people see you carrying those bags of shopping for your parents, opening the doors for your parents, making sure that your parents get a good seat wherever they are in the restaurant at home, giving your parents the best of food, serving your parents before you serve anybody else. These kind of actions, be proud to do that because you are from those who are blessed. You are from those who are chosen if you find yourself behaving in that manner. But if you find yourself from those who always make your parents serve you and you are not serving them, Always make your parents want to be patient with your behavior, yet you are never patient with their behavior. Then there is something wrong with you, and you need to recheck your iman. So we need to be from those who give our parents quality time. You know, today it's hard to find that a child can sit with his parents and have a conversation. The child so much wants to be on the phone or the gadget with his friends on FaceTime, etc. That's good. Spend your time with your friends. No parent will say to you, don't do that. Because you see the parent, all he wants for his children is to be happy. Never will the parent want for his child not to be happy. But you also, young children and elderly children who still have parents, have to ensure that you give your parents quality time. You spend time with them and have conversations with them. The elder your father gets and the elder your mother gets, for her to hear your voice in conversation is the most valuable thing to her even if it be a phone call from you being a thousand miles away from her. Now we have so much technology, FaceTime. Today, your parents are amazed that, son, how come you're calling me and I can see you on the video? To them, they're still not used to this technology, right, that they, weren't, they didn't grow up with. But if you spend that time having those conversations with them, you put in their hearts so much pleasure. So it's something we should truly be thought about. The Prophet ﷺ, he taught us that we should never disrespect our parents in any way, shape or form. In fact, as in Abi Dawood, the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna min akbar al kabair an yal an arajulu abahu. That the Prophet ﷺ said that from the greatest of the major sins, 
is that a person, a man or a person, would humiliate or curse his own father and mother. The companions is totally shocked when they heard this. Oh Prophet of Allah, how would a person curse his own parents? Disrespect his own parents. The Prophet ﷺ said, Yal'an Aba Rajul fa yal'an abuhu or abahu wa yal'an ummahu fa yal'an ummahu that a person will get into an argument with somebody maybe and he will curse the father of that person and then that person will curse his father or he will curse the mother of that person and then that person will cause a curse upon his mother. So here the Prophet Sallallahu in this hadith in Abi Dawood is teaching us that in no way, shape or form should you be a cause for somebody cursing your parent, for being rude to your parent. So then how about you without even getting into an argument, you yourself curse your parent. You yourself are rude to your parent. How despicable is that? Ensure that you treat your parents like royalty. In your presence, your parents have to be treated like royalty. The words that you choose and the behavior that you choose. You'll see an amazing situation now in Sahih Muslim. It's mentioned that Abdullah ibn Dinar, he was with Abdullah ibn Umar. And a certain interaction took place. And I want you to think about this interaction and understand that it took place because anything to do with the parents is honored and virtuous and lofty. Anything to do with the parents. Their status is that high with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it's not just them that are held in esteem. It's everything connected to them. So Abdullah ibn Dinar, he was with Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. And they were walking, traveling. So they came across this Bedouin. Poor chap in the desert. Abdullah ibn Umar gets off his camel or his riding beast quickly. And he sits this man upon the riding beast. And he takes off his turban, his amama, and he gives it to him. And this Abdullah ibn Dinar, he's looking at Abdullah ibn Umar, shocked. He said, Aslahak Allah. This is just a poor Bedouin. He will be happy with a small gift. Why have you gone and given him your riding beast and your turban in the midday's heat? So Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, this one, his father was loved to my father, beloved by my father. So it's not even the, the, the friend of his father, it's the son of the friend of his father. And he said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, that from the best of joining the ties with parents is that you connect with the friends of your parents or the ones that your parents used to love and have respect for. So as we said, it's not just restricted to the parents alone. It's anything which is connected to the parents. They are that royal and that majestic in the eyes of the believer. That even, you know, some of us today, we're so terrible in behavior towards our parents. Our parents, they have friends that are coming over and we quickly dash out the back door. I don't want to serve them. I don't want to be around making the tea and serving the biscuits or whatever it be. No. You know that these are loved by your parents. You know that these are friends of your parents and their visit will make your parents happy. So you should be there in the conversation. You should be there entertaining your parents' guests, your parents' friends, as a way of honoring your parents whilst they are alive and when they pass away also. And of course, from the mannerisms pertaining to the parents, is that one should make istighfar, as mentioned in the Quran. Oh Allah, forgive me and my parents on the day of judgment as well as the believers. But don't make this dua and this forgiveness limited, limited to when they pass away. May Allah have mercy upon all the believing parents. Do it whilst they're alive. They shouldn't go as a Jude in your day except that you are making dua for your parents. Every time you make dua for yourself, before you make dua for yourself, think about your parents. Make dua for them. Ensure that you remember them and not just think about yourself. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in Ahmed and Ibn Kathir in the tafsir, he said the hadith is authentic. That in Allah Ta'ala la yarfa'u li abd darajatuhum fil jannah. فيقول العبد يا رب أن لهذا 
that verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise the status of a righteous slave li Abdin Salih fil Jannah, a righteous slave in Jannah, and his bounties will be so increased that the slave will be astonished. Allah, why am I be treated in such a magnificent way with so many generous bounties? I didn't earn this. Where did it come from? So Allah will say, Bi istighfar waladuka lak. Due to the continual istighfar that your children kept on making for you. This is what kept raising you in ranks in Jannah. So don't ever forget your parents in dua, whether they are in the dunya or they have moved on to the hereafter. If they're in the dunya, keep asking Allah to increase them in good health because you want them to be around. Keep asking Allah to increase them in Iman because you want them to die and live upon Iman. Keep asking Allah to remove from them any sorrow and sadness that they may have. You know the parents, they never stop worrying. They worried about you until you became an adult and now they worry about your children until they will become adults. They keep on worrying. They can't help it due to the love that they have. So make that dua that Allah take worry away from them. Give them peace, tranquility and happiness, etc, etc. So going back to the verse that we first quoted. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ أَحَدُهُمَا الْكِبَرُ أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ وَلَا تَنْحَرْهُمَا لَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ So here in the verse, Allah is saying that be dutiful to your parents. And if they reach old age with you, one or both of them, then do, don't even say uff to them. Ta'affuf. In the Arabic language, uff is the, is the least sound that you can make of displeasure. So Allah Azawajal, he said, don't even say uff. That means nothing else after that of displeasure or bad manners can be said. So if you see your parents, they request something from you, son, get me a cup of tea. And you say, Phew. I was busy watching TV. I'm on the phone with my friend. If you make that sound of displeasure, you are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever your parents ask from you, never make that sound of uff. And then Allah says, وَلَا تَنْحَرْهُمَا This is different now. First, you cannot even make the sound of displeasure when they ask something from you. Now, if they behave in a way which you are not pleased with, you know, sometimes when the parents get el elder, they behave sometimes in a strange way. Maybe they become a bit erratic in their behavior. Maybe they are prone to getting angry over the smallest of things. You may look at them and think, give them a bad look. Oh, Baba, why are you behaving this way? Allah says, Wala tanharhuma. So firstly, you cannot say, uff, displeasure in speech towards anything they ask. And also when they do something which you are not happy with, you don't have the right to be displeased with them. So don't ever be that person when you have taken your parents shopping and you're waiting in the car for them and you are honing away, Mama, hurry up, Baba, hurry up. Don't ever be that person. Allah says, Wala tanharhuma. Okay? What did he say next? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waqfid lahum tinahadhulli min rahma. And lower your wing of humility to them in your behavior. They are your royalty. How would you behave in the presence of a king and a queen? You would feel the humility. You would feel humbled. You would feel the presence of somebody who has status. That's how you feel in front of your parents. Feel their presence and understand their status when you enter upon them. And make dua for them that Allah have mercy upon them. As O oh Allah, they brought me up when I was a child. So we shouldn't ever forget what our parents have done for us. Many, many sleepless nights, your mother, she spent when you were a child. She couldn't sleep unless you could sleep. If you were sick, she was sick. Even when you grew up and you became a teenager and you thought your mother had forgotten about you and you were out with your friends at night, coming back very late, your mother didn't sleep. She was at the window looking and waiting until you got home. And she was never happy and never had tranquility in her heart until she saw you come through the door. This is the, what your mother went through for you. Never forget what your parents did for you. Never forget that many a time they wanted to buy themselves a gift. But they sacrificed that money for you. So you could just have those new trainers that you wanted to show off in front of your friends. But they wanted something for themselves, but they didn't spend it. They kept it. They kept it for you. Many times. They kept it for your education. Don't forget them. They did so much for us. How much patience they had with our misbehavior. 
Every time we spoke to them in a loud voice, in a rude voice, we argued, some of us, with our parents. But they were patient. Now it's our time to be thankful to them and to always remember what they did for us. The greatest achievement that any big, anybody could have had in this dunya was what? Was to become a Sahabi of the Prophet ﷺ, right? There was a man who had the opportunity to become a companion of the Prophet ﷺ, to become a Sahabi. But his mother needed him. So he chose to stay in the company of his mother rather than go and pledge allegiance to the Prophet ﷺ and to get that huge status of being a companion, a Sahabi. He took the pleasure of his mother and the service of his mother before that. And as a replacement, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him du'as that would always be answered. To the extent that Umar radiallahu anhu, when he came to hear of this man, he looked for him and he begged him to make du'a for him. Who was this man? Hawais al Qani, right? So he got that huge status from what? From obeying his mother and serving his mother. If you want your du'as to be answered in life, if you want goodness to come to you in, in life, if you want your business to be successful, if you want any type of happiness, seek it through your parents. Sometimes you find yourself sad in the day and you can't explain why. You find yourself stressed and you can't explain why, especially youngsters, teenagers. They get all angry for no reason. My advice to you and to myself is go and be kind to your parents. If you want to remove that sadness quickly and you want goodness to come to you quickly, go and kiss your mother and father on the head. Go and say a kind word to them. Go and wash the dishes for them. Do anything for them and you will see that that sadness and that tightness in your chest will completely disappear. In Adab al-Mufrad of Imam Bukhari and Shaykh al-Albani said this is authentic. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu was making tawaf around the Kaaba. And he saw a man carrying his mother making tawaf on, on his back. He said, I've come all this way to make umrah for my mother on my back, like her riding beast. Do you see that I have fulfilled her rights? Imagine he's carrying her for whatever the distance, some say it was from Yemen, all that distance to bring her to umrah and she, she's making tawaf on his back and he's not complaining. He said, do you see that I have fulfilled my obligation towards her? Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah, he said, not even for one contraction, not even for one of those breaths when she was giving birth to you. So, you know, we pat ourselves on the back and we say, today I was very good, Baba. I did a lot for him. I could take a break now. Don't pat yourself on the back. Just see it as a gift to you that Allah has allowed you to serve your parents. And the more you do of it, the more of the gift that you are getting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't see it that you have, you know, offloaded some type of obligation. No, flip the script. It's for you. Every good that you are doing for your parents is coming back to you in reward and coming back to you in tranquility and barakah in this dunya and the akhirah. Also in Adab al-Mufrad of Imam Bukhari, once a man came to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, the scholar of the companions, and he narrated to him that there was a woman that he wanted to marry. But this woman, she refused and she got married to somebody else. So this man, he said, I was enraged at why she, did, she rejected my love and took the love of somebody else. So I killed her, he said. A huge, heinous crime he's committed. So he said to Abdullah ibn Abbas, is there a way I can make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal? Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, is your mother alive? Is your mother alive? The man said, no. Then Abdullah ibn Abbas said, he said, try to do as many good deeds as you can and seek as much forgiveness as you can from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the man went, one of his students came to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma and he said, why did you ask him if his mother is alive? He said, I do not know. He said, I do not know of an action which can bring a person closer to Allah or is more esteemed in the sight of Allah than being good to one's mother. You see? So if you want to remove the sins from yourself, be good to your mother, be good to your parents. That is a sure way of removing sins from oneself. So we have to remember in conclusion that if we have our parents alive with us, they are like a shade that we stand under. And this shade protects us from all harm in this dunya and the hereafter. And this shade, it brings us comfort and joy. And this shade, it brings us barakah. So we never want to step out of that shade. Always try to be in the presence of your parents if you are able to do so. 
always try to take benefit from that shade whilst they're alive. I know some of us, we had to leave them for whatever reason it be. But we have to truly ask ourselves, people came to the Prophet ﷺ in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ, saying that we wanted to make hijrah with you, Rasulullah. We want to make jihad with you, Rasulullah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, go back to your parents. So we have to be true with ourselves. Are we really doing what we think is the best in the sight of Allah Azawajal? Should we be with our parents or should we be away from our parents? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. If there's anything that was correct, it was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shortcomings and mistakes were from myself and shaitan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering a gathering of forgiveness for us and to make us from those that hear the best of speech and act upon it. Make us from those whose parents have long lives. And those that have passed away, may Allah forgive all of their sins and make us from those who serve their parents. Ameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. If you have any questions, then feel free. Jazakallah khair. Good question. If your parents are non-Muslims, then the same rules apply. Because asma Bint Abi Bakr radiallahu anha, her mother, who was a mushrika, a non Muslim, a polytheist, she wanted to come and visit Asma. So she asked the Prophet, وسلم, can I be good to my mother? And the Prophet وسلم, said, go and be good to your mother. So there's no differentiation. What is the differentiation? What is the difference between the non Muslim parent treatment and the Muslim parent? In if they ask you to disobey Allah, in the sense of they ask you to in joining their festivities to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these kind of things. And that also applies to the Muslims also. Because of the rule, لا تعت المخلوق في معصية الخالق. There is no obedience to the, to the created in disobedience to the creation. Uh, there is no, disobe no obedience to the creation in disobedience to the creator. That is the rule. So we don't obey anybody, no matter who they are, in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But of course, if it's your parents, you, you advise them in the best of manners, right? In the most humble of ways. We shouldn't advise our parents ever in front of people. Never advise your parent in front of people. And always remember that you are their child. In their eyes, you are nothing. You are just a small baby. No matter how old you think you are, no matter how strong you think you are, advise them with the best of wisdom and the best of manners. And never make it an argument. We get into arguments with our parents. No, you put your advice forward and that's it. After that, you make dua for them.